My stepfather tore my family apart by lying about me, and now they're begging for help as their life falls apart. I'm finally free, but can I forgive them or should I walk away forever? For the past five years, I, an 18-year-old man, have lived with my mother and stepdad. My life changed dramatically when at 10, my biological dad died in a vehicle accident. For my mom as much as for me, it was a trying period. For a few years, we battled both financially and emotionally until my mom met Mark when I was 12. They spent a year dating before getting married when I was 13. Mark clearly didn't like me right from the start. He always saw me as a burden and a continual reminder of my mother's previous relationship. That day they were wedded to me. I noticed Mark staring coldly, calculatedly while everyone was celebrating. Though I dismissed it as simply wedding day nerves, it made me shudder. Growing up, I made every effort to fit in with Mark. Along with maintaining my grades and helping him with yard work or watching football, activities he liked, I worked around the house. Still, it never was sufficient whatever I did. He would always find means to denigrate me or make me unwelcome. Mark would criticize me for not being his actual son or for simply squandering room in his house. If it were up to me, you would be out on the street where you belong, he would say, or... You're lucky your mother loves you because no one else would put up with a useless kid like you. Though they hurt, I tried not to let them define me. When she saw these exchanges, my mother would try to referee, but she usually sided with Mark to defuse conflict. She might remark, he doesn't mean it that way or you need to try harder to get along with Mark. In my own house, I felt as though I was continually treading on eggshells. As I aged, things grew worse. Mark insisted on my paying rent when I reached 16 and started working part-time at a nearby grocery store. Though she felt it was a little harsh, my mother agreed it would teach me responsibility. So, a good amount of my little pay went to Mark every month, leaving me nothing to save or spend on myself. My mother recently landed an incredible job overseas. She could possibly acquire a permanent job from a six-month contract she was presented with in Europe. I could see the thrill in her eyes when she initially told me about it. I had not seen her genuinely delighted about something in years, but worries about living alone with Mark soon eclipsed my delight for her. I told my mother about how Mark treated me when she was away, therefore expressing my worries. I related stories of events when he would accidentally ruin items I cared about, such as the model airplane my dad and I created together before he passed away, or how he would forget to buy groceries I could eat knowing I had dietary restrictions. My mother dismissed it, saying Mark was merely tough and I was exaggerating. She advised me to give him an opportunity, and that living together might strengthen our relationship. That day my mother left was among the toughest of my life. I hugged her tightly while we stood at the airport, stifling tears. Though I wanted her to stay, to not be left with Mark alone, I couldn't bring myself to slow her down. Mark laid his hand on my shoulder as she passed the security checkpoint. Though his hold was agonizing, to anyone observing it would have looked like a consoling action. His voice chilly, he continued, Let's go home, boy. Things are going to be now. And they were different as well. Things plummeted from the time we arrived home. Mark started screaming at me for the most minor transgressions. Should I leave a dish in the sink or arrive home five minutes later than usual? He would yell. Once on my way to school, I unintentionally left a light on in my room. Mark had taken out every light bulb from my room when I returned. You don't deserve to have any if you can't remember to turn off the lights, he remarked, grinning. Saying he was merely letting me stay because of my mother, he threatened to kick me out several times. One incorrect move, he would counsel. And you'll be out on the street. And who do you suppose your mother will find credible? Me, her devoted husband, or her unappreciative kid brat. Though I tried to keep my head down and avoid confrontation, it was getting intolerable. My mental health was failing and I couldn't concentrate on my academics. I was depressed and concerned all the time as my grades began to slide. Several times I called my mother to let her know what was occurring, but she always appeared preoccupied and advised me to sort it out with Mark. Her voice sounded stressed about her new employment, and I didn't want to aggravate her problems. About two months into my mother's absence, one evening things got out of control. Covering a sick colleague, I had been working late at my job. When I got home late, I contacted Mark to let him know. But when I got there, he was waiting for me, enraged. He accused me of lying, of doing drugs, or running afoul of the law. He labeled me useless and declared he was bored with having me around when I tried to explain. Driven by a flash of wrath, he seized a box containing old pictures, my dad's watch, and school keepsakes and threatened to toss them. I begged him to stop, and in the struggle the box dropped and its contents spilled over the floor. Mark taught me as I hurried to gather my things. This ends now, he snarled. I will throw you out myself. I want you out of my house by tomorrow. That was the final straw. I knew I couldn't stand it anymore. I packed a bag with basics and departed in the middle of the night once Mark turned in for sleep. After a few days of crashing at my best friend's house, I discovered a small room to rent using part-time job savings. I didn't notify my mother right away since I wanted to spare her from stress and compromise her employment possibility. When she returned, I reasoned I would explain everything. Mark began sending me frightening notes that he would phone the police and report me as a runaway should I not return, so I blocked his number. One month now and I'm getting by on my own. 
It's not easy I'm trying to keep up with school while working extra hours to pay for basic needs including rent. Though I hardly eat some days it's still better than living under Mark's roof. Though I feel bad about leaving without telling my mother, I also feel as though I had little option. Stress and continual fear were breaking me. So Reddit, am I the moron for leaving the house of my stepfather while my mother was overseas? Should I have pushed more to make things work? Should I get in touch with my mother right now and clarify everything? I'm lost and would much benefit from any guidance. Eat it. I appreciate your replies, everybody. Having perused them, I value your help. Many of you have inquired about my housing circumstances and future intentions. I came into a modest studio apartment through a buddy of a friend right now. Though I can hear every movement my neighbors make and the plumbing is erratic, it's safe and reasonably priced. To pay for things I'm part-time instructing online and working at a nearby diner. Regarding education, I am in my senior year and set to graduate. My school counselor has been in contact with me on my circumstances and has been quite helpful in ensuring I remain on target. Others of you advised getting in touch with other relatives. Sadly, my grandma died a few years ago and my mom was an only kid. After his death, my dad's side of the family lost contact with us. Hence, for the past few years, Mark, my mother and I basically have been the only ones in touch. When my mother gets back, I'm not sure how to handle things. Though another part of me wants to tell her everything. I am afraid she won't believe me or will start to side with Mark once more. When I visit the bridge, I suppose I'll cross it. Right now my priorities are finishing school and keeping afloat. Again, thank you everyone for your wise counsel and polite comments. Update 1. After my first post six months ago, a lot has happened. I wanted to let everyone know about current affairs. Last week, my mother got back from a work trip overseas. Though I was anxious about meeting her, I also looked forward to at last clarifying all that had happened with Mark. Still, events did not go as I had intended. The day she returned, I got her on the line. Her voice was icy and hostile, not at all the gentle, caring tone I was accustomed to. She insisted on knowing whether it was accurate that I had fled with money taken from Mark. Startled and perplexed, my mind flew to try to figure out where this charge originated. I tried to describe what actually happened, how Mark had been verbally nasty, how he had threatened to kick me out and how I left for my own safety and mental health. I informed her about the episode involving my box of personal items and about how Mark had made every day she was gone awful. Still, my mother would not pay attention. She insisted non-stop that Mark had shown her proof of my theft. She was evasive when I asked what proof, mentioning missing money and dubious bank activity. I assured her I had never taken anything in my life. It was all falsehoods. She appeared to have her opinion already formed, even though I reminded her of how honest I had always been with her and how hard I had worked at my part-time job to help the house. To enable us to have a face-to-face -face conversation, I pleaded with her to meet personally. She accepted under some coaxing, but Mark was with her when we met at a neighborhood cafe. My heart dropped the minute I saw him. Though he looked sad, I could see the triumphant gleam in his eyes. Mark presented me with a show of worry and disappointment. He concocted a story about how he had tried his best to look after me while my mom was away, but that I had grown rebellious and begun pilfering money to pay for a party life. He discussed how he had spotted strange withdrawals from their joint account and how he would have noticed cash missing from his wallet. I stumbled. Though he told it so convincingly, every word he spoke was a lie. He even claimed to have fictitious bank records and invoices proving I had been taking money. Though I'm not sure how he made them, they appeared real enough to mislead my mother. He discussed his attempts to approach me about it, but I had fled instead of dealing with the fallout. I tried furiously to explain my side of the narrative and defend myself. I described how I'd been struggling to make ends meet in my tiny apartment and how I'd been working extra shifts to help myself. I mentioned to them the evenings I would have gone to bed hungry as I cannot afford rent as well as food. I begged my mother to remember how I had always been conscientious with money how I had never given her any cause to question me before. But Mark had obviously been working on my mother for several weeks prior to her comeback. Her belief of me as a troubled, unappreciative child who had seized advantage of her absence was shaped by his poisoning of her against me. He presented himself as the victim, a worried stepfather limited to helping his wayward stepson. Seeing the sight of disappointment and wrath in my mother's eyes was the worst of it. She said she had trusted me to behave while she was away and she couldn't believe I would treat her this way. She accused me of trying to assign blame and fabricating falsehoods about my loving stepfather when I tried to explain about Mark's behavior. Her voice breaking, how could you do this to us, she asked. We gave you everything, this is how you reimburse us. Her comments ripped right through, each one like a physical blow. Her own son Mark seemed to me incomprehensible as she believed him over me. My mother informed me at the meeting that she wanted time to consider what to do going forward. If she didn't trust me, she stated she cannot have me back in the house. I watched Mark comfort my mother by putting his arm around her shoulders as they exited the eatery. I got queasy looking at it. I kept trying to get in touch with my mother throughout the next few days, hoping she would listen to me free from Mark's influence. She either answered with brief, icy texts instructing me to quit lying and take accountability for my behavior or ignored my calls. I was quite hungry, hoping they may be able to talk some sense into her. I contacted a few of Mom's friends. Alas, it appeared Mark had also gotten to them. They all told me how let down they felt of me, how they couldn't believe I would have stolen from my own household. 
My mother finally sent me a lengthy text message stating she had decided it would be better if I stayed away from home. She claimed she needed time to get through everything and that she felt rather let down in me. She advised me not to get in touch for a little while. I felt crushed. Along with losing my house, I had lost my mother, the one I considered to be always on my side. Mark had turned her against her own son by totally controlling her. The next several weeks blurted together. Trying to forget the huge void in my life where my family used to be, I pushed myself into work and education. Often lying awake at night, I struggled to fall asleep and found myself wondering what I could have said better to make my mother believe me. I replayed the talks in my mind. My grades began to slide once more, and I ran the danger of not graduating. It took a worried teacher dragging me aside to get me out of my slide back. She questioned what was wrong when she observed my alterations. Hesitantly at first, I told her she thought of me surprisingly. She assisted me in contacting a social professional and a school counselor capable of offering me tools and assistance. Their assistance allowed me to get back on track with my academics and even obtain some extra financial aid to cover living expenses. I'm now figuring out my next moves. Working as hard as I can to support myself, I am still in my little flat. I have contacted a few reliable teachers at the institution who have been encouraging and guiding me through independent finishing of high school. About the future, I'm terrified, angry, and wounded. My mother's treachery aches especially, and there are days when the loneliness feels unbearable. But I also want to prove Mark mistaken and show my mother the truth at last. Though I have not given up hope totally, I am not sure if our connection will ever be the same. Right now, I'm mostly planning for college and finishing off high school. Though it won't be simple, I am resolved to lead a better life for myself whether or not my family supports it. I appreciate your support of my original post everywhere. I would really appreciate any guidance on how one might go from here. How might I recover from this betrayal? When I feel so alone, how can I design a life for myself? Any advice would be appreciated. Update 2 5 years later. My last update five years ago, and my life has altered drastically. I wanted to let others know what had happened and obtain some viewpoint on a most recent development. After high school, I threw myself into my education and job. Though I still felt the loss of my family hard, I turned that suffering into will. Majoring in computer science, I secured a scholarship at a state institution. I balanced several part-time jobs to make ends meet. Freelancing web design, working at the university library, and even weekend pizza delivery. Though it was demanding, college also released me. Living with Mark, I felt free from the continual anxiety and terror that had dogged me for the first time in years. To help me through the pain of my past, I began visiting a therapist and befriended people who grew to be like family. After graduating with honors, I found work directly out of college at a bright tech startup. Though I worked long hours and under great pressure, the work was challenging and I loved that challenge. Being appreciated for my work ethic and abilities felt fantastic, something I hadn't lately experienced. I have ascended in the company during the last three years. Originally a junior developer, the higher-ups were drawn to my commitment and creation ideas. Within a year, I was elevated to team lead. Lately, I was assigned lead developer for our primary offering. Our startup recently attracted a sizable investment, which sent us into the major tech industry ranks. Along with stock options that might be quite valuable should the business keep expanding, this brought a sizable pay rise for me. For the first time in my life, I am comfortable as well as financially steady. Along with moving into a decent apartment and even beginning to save money for the future, I bought my first car. I never spoke with Mark or my mother during this period. Particularly during holidays and events like my college graduation and career promotions, it was difficult. There were evenings when I would lie awake wondering whether my mother ever considered me, whether she ever regretted choosing Mark above me. But I concentrated on starting a new life for me and assembling a selected family including mentors and close friends. Out of the blue last week, I got a call from an unidentified number. My response caused a hush, then I heard a voice I hadn't heard five years ago. Mom, was it? Her voice sounded worn out and desperate. Nothing like the confident, loving mother I knew from my early years. She informed me Mark and she were having money problems. Mark apparently had some poor investments and their property was about to go under foreclosure. Mark has been unemployed for the past year since his company he worked for filed for bankruptcy. They were drowning in debt after devouring their savings. My mother said she was sorry for all that had transpired years ago. Her voice broke as she said she had come to see Mark had controlled her over time. She admitted she had been carrying guilt for years and she regretted not trusting me. She asked whether we might get together to try to heal our relationship and to go over things. I froze. I had dreamed of this for years, my mother recognizing the truth and reaching out to re-establish contact. Now that it was occurring though, I experienced a rush of emotions, optimism, resentment, grief, and residual betrayal. After a protracted silence, I decided to see her at a cafe the same one where we had our confrontation five years earlier. It startled me to find Mark and my mother there when I got there. With her grayed hair and worried lined face, my mother seemed older and exhausted. Mark's shoulders dropped and his eyes downcast suggested he had lost the cocky air he formerly possessed. More specifically, they said they were months behind on their mortgage payments and that the bank threatened to seize their residence. When his company closed, Mark lost his career. Even now, he has struggled to find consistent employment. 
Teacher pay for my mother was insufficient to pay living expenses and debt. I observed as they spoke the dynamic between them had altered. Often breaking off or correcting Mark, my mother looked more forceful. Mark, on the other hand, seemed subdued, a far cry from the dominant man I recalled. The true reason they reached out was to ask whether I might provide them loans to enable them to get back on their feet. Having heard through mutual friends about my achievements in the tech sector, they thought I would be in a position to be of use. Sitting there, I listened to their appeal and experienced a range of feelings. Part of me felt vindicated. Years ago, Mark had lied and exploited the circumstances, and at last they were owning this. Another side of me, though, was resentment at their only outreach when they required something from me. Mom grabbed my hand and hers across the table, tears in her eyes. I know we don't deserve your help, she added. We are desperate even though what we did to you was awful. We have nowhere else to turn. Mark joined in, his voice missing the assurance it had previously possessed. I know you have every cause to hate me, he continued. I treated you cruelly. I let everything be poisoned by my insecurity and jealousy. Though I am really sorry for what I did, I am not asking for pardon. Their apologies set off past hurts and memories. I considered the lonely evenings in my small apartment battling poverty. I recalled the sense of betrayal when my own mother decided to accept a falsehood instead of her son's reality. I told them I needed time to consider it once they had finished speaking and inhaled deeply. I promised nothing when I left the cafe. Their begging gaze trailed after me. I'm divided now. One hand I have worked hard for my accomplishment, and I do not believe I owe them anything based on their treatment of me. Mark's falsehoods ruined my bond with my mother and drove me to fend for myself when young. Part of me wants to turn away and let them deal with the results of their behavior. Still, even with everything, I worry about my mother. Though I worry that if I assist her, I would be exposing myself to more manipulation or demands of continuous support. The idea of her being homeless or struggling hurts my heart. The way this could affect my own financial stability worries me as well. I'm not sure whether I could afford to save them without sacrificing my own future, even if right now I'm doing great. The startup scene is erratic, hence my present success is not sure to last. One more issue is forgiveness. Can I really get beyond what transpired? After such a great betrayal, is it possible to repair a relationship with my mother? And then regarding Mark, can I ever trust him or have him back in my life even as he apologies? Unable to decide, I have been debating these questions for the past week. I discussed it with my closest friends and even mentioned it in a session with my therapist. Though everyone has different ideas, finally they all say the same, it is my decision to make. Part of me is driven to be a great person and offer an olive branch of support. Perhaps this is the first step toward mending past hurts and reconstructing my relationship with my mother. Another side of me, meanwhile, is terrified of subjecting myself to the suffering I have so battled once more. So on Reddit, I find myself wondering once more. Am I bad if I refuse to assist my mother and stepdad financially following all that has happened? Should I provide them another chance or guard the life I have created or myself? I could really appreciate some outside view because I find myself at a crossroads. 